and on the side of the road is a lawnmower that says free won't start what do you say we throw that in the truck and bring it back to the operating table see what it needs A pretty nice machine about 10 years old maybe overhead valve put it in there hey guys how's it going so it's been about a week or so that I picked this up on the side of the road and I've done nothing to it so that you and I can Kind of hang out and work on it together and figure out what went on. Looks like it sat out for a season or two. Doesn't look terribly dirty. And of course, free won't start seems to be the motto <laughs> of it. Uh, I'm not sure what year it is. I think it's got a tag on the back. Let's see what we got. All right here, we got a date on it. 2012. Well, it meets the uh, safety standards for 2012. We'll call it that. We'll say it's 10 years old. I haven't even tried pulling the cord on it yet. Let's give it a quick visual. See if we think anything that's a little funky. One thing I see right away is it looks like it was spitting rust out of the muffler. Not sure what's going on with that. Again, if it was left out in the rain, I'm sure that didn't help. Looks like the valve cover is leaking some oil on it. A little kicky around there. Let's go see... Yeah, we'll wait for fuel and oil. Handlebars, I see what do we got going on here. Looks kind of weird, doesn't it? I don't know if it's supposed to be on that angle or not. That might be an issue right in itself right there. It looks like that should be popped over and on there. If that's the case, it's going to have a shutoff on this cable. If this cable doesn't get pulled far enough, there is a brake and then there's an electrical circuit that's down on the engine that will not allow it to have spark or kill spark when you let go of it. So that might be even right there what's going on. Sit your prop in a stand. Let's go flip her on our sides. Go check some fluids and figure out what happened. Let's go flip her on its sides. See what the other side looks like. Yeah. Blade doesn't look terrible. It's self-propelled on the front. It's got a gearbox in the front. Of course, not cleaned up. I don't see any, any rot holes? I don't see any. That's a good sign. Blades kind of beat. It still has the wing left on. This is what gives you the lift. It makes the grass kind of stand up and also puts uh, a little bit of a volume, pressure, I should say, into the mower deck. Again, like a vacuum cleaner uh, into the uh, bagger assembly. Wheels look okay. And let's go flip it back down. We'll go check on fluids and see if it pulls over. You can get rid of the advertising. Huh? Yeah, unfortunately what happens around here, the cost to get something fixed or looked at is almost cost prohibitive. Because like something like this, I don't know, was this mower, we'll call it say 250 if it's new. You're probably going to spend 150 bucks on it just to have it serviced minimum. Unless you get like a little local, somebody coming around, eh, it's just a hair lobe, it's got oil on it. Let's go see what the gas cap has to offer. Here's that one too. It says no E85. I heard some rumors that they're going to be taking all fuel. Making an E85, well, that'd be great. Power equipment has enough hard time. Gas doesn't look bad. Somebody put fresh gas in it. I wonder if they tried running it for the season. I just wouldn't fire up for them. I'm suspecting that handle. I'm gonna let this settle for a little bit sometimes. You know, other than that dirt, that dirt may have came out of the turkey baster I was using. But we'll see if we have any water that settles out of that. Still might be some in the tank yet. Yeah. 
the 10% uh, ethanol and fuel that we have now already does a number on our stuff. Imagine opening it. It's probably the original filter. It's not wet. That's good. Let's pull the plug. Actually, let me go lower it down and uh, we'll see if it spins over. How's that? <laughs> Might be a, <laughs> a uh, priority. Let's just see what we get. Got compression. Let's go throw a clamp up on the handlebar and we'll keep that red lever knocked down and we'll give it a yank, see if it has any spark. We'll pull the plug out. I think I talked about the fuels before in different videos. You know, our area um, ethanol free is not easily, easily, is that a word? <laughs> easily obtained. Uh, some boat marinas and uh, airports we can kind of grab, but if not, it really like. You gotta go about 16 miles or so to go get it. Yeah, some of you guys have it. It's still readily available at your gas stations. But that's also why there's so much free power equipment on the side of the road here. Especially like really small engine stuff. Mowers and whatnot, not too bad. They'll still screw them up. Yeah, it's got a bit excessive about them on the oil on it. But the stuff like, uh, chainsaws, weed whackers, that kind of thing. They really don't uh, hold up well. Yeah, we'll. Just do one of those. The other one's the drive, I believe, for uh, making it go. Hopefully I should be able to grab the string right here. We're gonna look right at that. That's got spark. Yep, it's got spark, so that wasn't the issue. Good, it makes it a little bit more difficult. I just for shits and giggles. Let's go pop this cover off and hopefully we can kind of see what I was talking about. As far as it not making ground. It's pretty common actually. I say that on mowers for no spark and on generators it's generally the low oil shut off. It's like somebody was possibly in here. And cleaned out a rat's nest. It looks like it had a mouse nest in it and somebody actually went and took it all out of there. The other thing too is uh, if you hit something real hard, it'll shear the key. Let's go look on the other side. I'll show you what I was talking about as far as the cable. So here's that cable that pulls from up above and it has a ground wire that goes to the coil or the magneto which is underneath the flywheel that makes sparks and it'll ground it out. I would say it's probably that wire right there. It's everything's black, so it's kind of hard to see. But there's a wire right there. So if this cable does not pull far back enough, it does two things. One, there's a brake shoe. That's the brake shoe. Let me uh, undo it. Instead of talking about it. Right. So you can see the movement it has. It has a brake shoe that. Sp uh, stops the engine from spinning and then it has a ground that it touches and it grounds out the coil and shuts the spark off at the same time. So if your handle or your cable is only pulling it, you know, that far and it doesn't, I don't know if you can even see right there, it's not making it yet. It just barely makes it. Even on this one, it's barely making it. Let me get you. Okay, so we're looking at this tab right here and this is the ground pad right there. And these two have to separate for the ground to go away. And if you look, that is just making it by a hair. Just clearing it. So it still may be part of the issue. I also noticed it's got a bunch of crap sitting on top of it too. So um, <laughs> it may not want to shut off. It seems like there's a bunch of crud on that pad. This stuff, I really shouldn't. Oh, this stuff should be here. All that. That's going to stop it from uh, wanting to shut off. So let's go clean that off real sec. <laughs> real sec. Clean it off for a second. I'll bring you back. We'll look at that one more time. Might be too much light, but we'll see. And all right. You got about a... See, right? That's touching. That's not. 
but it, there's not much room that this is making it by. And again, a lot of times it happens, the cables will just kind of stretch out or sometimes the jacket breaks down and the cable kind of falls in a little further up. Sometimes a good trick is you can actually just pull them back a little bit and put a tie wrap behind them and get that little extra. Generally, it's, it's morely up in this area that kind of gets the beating. Especially if somebody is, uh, uh, takes the handle and flips it down a lot of times, it kind of beats the cable up a little bit. All right, let's go see if we can figure out why it doesn't run. So another thing this thing has on it, it's got an automatic throttle. You don't adjust the throttle and it has an automatic choke. This is the choke that you're looking at right here. And then it's functioning. It is closed when it's cold. What it has, is it has like a little thermal cylinder spring. Uh, I think it's probably tapping off the exhaust. And as the engine warms up, it realizes the engine is getting warmer. It slowly backs the choke off. And then as it gets colder, it'll close it back up. I'll show you that. So that's this linkage right here. And you can see it's coming up off the exhaust. It's probably in the airflow too of hot air. And as the air heats up, like I said, it'll it'll take that and rotate it. Which direction we go? Well, two. Back there. You can see it. Yeah, and it'll just allow that to back off. I do think it also holds, it's got two separate, let me get the light on it. got two separate levers on it so this is the one coming from the coil so that's going to go back it off as it warms up but it also has as the throttle revs up this is the throttle right here and it goes to a governor that revs up that will also turn the choke off so it seems like it may have a little bit of light pressure choke when it's uh even when it's warmed up I'm not quite sure on that so my guess we're going to have a fuel issue but uh, let's go take the plug we'll go squirt a little bit of fuel in the plug hole Put the plug in it, we'll give it a kick, see what it does, see if it fires off for us. And we'll give her a little, a little prime for a good time, should be enough, just to see if it coughs and fires over. Plus we get to, a chance to listen to it too, make sure there's no clacking or knocking. Not that it may not do it when it warms up, but generally if they're blowing up, it'll let you know pretty quickly. Right, I'll just spin that in by hand. Let's give her a shot. Yeah, sometimes you prime them, they, they take off and they stay running. I'm saying that that's what's gonna happen, but. <laughs> Sounds like the governor's put up. bit of fuel run through it to kind of go suck up what was in the float ball so that's what was going on with it. you hear the governor was stuck in the beginning of it though it was revving real high let's go pop that cover back off and we're just going to do a service on this like we do on a regular machine and uh you know any kind of tips and tricks i can show and you guys want to uh, contribute anything to it uh, cool more than welcome to go do so i don't know if it shows up there's that gas that's in it you see how cloudy it is yeah, definitely absorbed some moisture. You can see, I can, it's even hard to, to see to the bottom clearly, clearly kind of like my speaking. <laughs> yeah, so let's go out, uh, dump that fuel tank right out. It's gonna need it. How good's your aim? Let's go get that. That's a full tank. Any poly walks coming out of it? You got a little bit of something spitting out of it. Oh, yeah. The very bottom of it was not uh, very pleasing. I want to drop it on the floor. I'm watching that front tire. <laughs> Slips off the bench. Yeah. Kind of a mixed opinion as far as it's good if you can get all the fuel out of something. And if you can't do that, fill it all the way up to the top. 
when you're putting it away. It doesn't leave any airspace for moisture to travel, but yeah, you can see how cloudy that is. I'm not sure if the camera, it does look as bad in the camera as it does in real, but it's hard to see. There's just crap in the bottom there. You can't even see it. See? I don't know if those are ants. What are they? Yard crap. All right, we should probably get that float bowl off of there too. But before we do that, we're, we're flipping it on its side. Let's go see if it has a drain plug underneath. I generally never really use them. We should just do the same what we did with the gas for the, uh, I do for the gas, I do for the oil. I just kind of flip it on its side and let it come out the fill plug. Uh, a lot of the newer motors are getting, motors, mowers, yeah, motor, are getting rid of that. And they're just having you do that all together. It may be underneath that plastic cover where the drive belt is for the front, but again, let's go get another pan. We'll flip it the other direction, get the oil out of it. Let's go do the other side. Same thing. I try to hang the tires about an inch away from the edge. Uh, yeah, need, that needed it. So you know, this thing's 10 years old and never really had any service to it. which is actually pretty common. Some people will change the oil, maybe put an air filter on it. That's usually about it. They'll change a blade when it hits a rock and it's shaking real bad and bent and nothing left underneath or it's three inches shorter than it normally is supposed to be. It's low on oil too. What's a mower work? What's a mower like this worth after you service it? Yeah, 80 bucks, 100 bucks. Self-propelled, it had the bagger, 120 bucks maybe. Uh, but how old it is and how whatever new stuff it's selling for, like a third to half of what a new one is. So if a new one's 250, yeah, 125 around there, if it's complete. Like I said, this, does, this doesn't have the bagger. So I'd say like 100 bucks, 80 bucks. How much time are we gonna go put in it? We'll see that by the end of the video, how much time we put in and how many parts you go through. And if you had to, like I said, if you had to go drop it off to get serviced, you're already past the price of it. A little sparkly. It's got a little bit of metallic to it. Nothing terrible though. I don't see any. I don't see any big parts floating around, but you can see that definitely the, uh, the little rainbow, metal rainbow inside there. That's engine guts. Let's get the carb off. At least the float bowl, float chamber. I think this one might have a plastic one on it. Some of the newer stuff switched over to that. Eh, one more. You didn't tell me. You saw it. There you go. Yeah, plastic carb. Uh, I think it's got a coupler. Nope, it just comes off of pressure. Let's see if we can get the choke lever off of it and we gotta get this spring. I think we gotta get that spring off of there. Nope, that could stay on there as one piece. Just a choke lever. Might be able to lift up on it and uh, let me get the fuel line out first. The gas can might just flip right up out of our way. We'll get the gas line off. Not necessary, but for filming purposes, for people have never gotten into any of this stuff. This allows you to see it a little bit better. And let's go get those pliers. Try not to beat it up too much. There we go. Plus, we want to clean that tank out a little more. Now, we should be able to flip it up. Off of there, yeah. We should be able to flip it up and get the linkages off. If they had multiple locations to go, I'd mark them, but it doesn't seem to. Just one for each one. Sometimes you'll see like it'll have like four or five holes on different linkages. So let's go bring it on the bench. Let's go pop that bottom of that bowl off and see what we got for crud. It's got a little Allen wrench plug in the bottom. I've generally found though. You need the right size socket. <laughs> I generally found that if you don't pull the bowl off, 
it generally, a lot of generals, will have crud in it that needs to be get cleaned out. Fortunately, the plastic doesn't rust, but what it does do is warp. Let's see if we can get that apart. Let me go get a little screwdriver. There we go. I go place the pry on. Let's try like that. Kind of flimsy. I don't want to break. Got like an O-ring inside there that swells up and locks up. It's pretty clean. We're still gonna go take it apart and blow it out though. <laughs> it got this far. So it's just a needle in the seat and a jet. Jet's down inside there. And we're gonna go pull that pin. And that'll allow us just to get the needle out of it. Yeah. Is the needle. What would a musty one video be without taking a carburetor apart, right? So I'm gonna look down the center of that. I believe you can pull that out, but the plastic stuff gets a little kind of temperamental. It's not as strong as um, the metal stuff, so it, it stands a good chance to get damaged. I'll give it a little bit of it ran on it and was running okay, so I don't want to damage something. We're going to leave well enough alone. That's where it's drawing fuel up through there, so I'm just going to go hit it with some compressed air. We're going to blow out the rest of it. We're going to blow out the bowl, clean it out. There's a little bit of crud in there. Not terrible, but there's, there's junk in there. So I'll go rinse that out. We'll put that back together. And we'll call that part good. Definitely wash your hands for reassembly. My hands were dirtier than the carb was. So that's the main issue it's gonna be right down the side there and just give it a the rest of it a bunch of a rinse I'll just come back with some compressed air and again we know it ran and idled so we know it's not too bad so I'm gonna go re It doesn't take much to uh, clog that little pin up too. You, you look at the, the size of that pinhole, and again, the smaller the machine, the smaller that surface is right there. And all you need is a little speck of dirt. You go up inside there, and that's it. So the needle, like that, when you wash your hands, needle hangs off the float. Drop it in. Actually, it looks like that one could pop straight down. It's got like a weird. Let's try it. Looks like it'll pop straight down in. Yeah. Again, I'm just gonna blow through it this direction. I should not be able to blow through. That's the fuel inlet. Nothing. Float's gonna hang down. I could blow through it. So that's good. Let me go give that a quick little rinse. I got a little bit of dirt on it. Get rid of that. That's it. Nice and simple on this one, huh? Motorcycle carbs and all, you take them apart there. There's a ton of stuff in them. There you go. I'm sure it's gonna fight me just as much putting it back together as I took it apart. Am I 180 out? There's your problem. <laughs> I let it crush the float. I'm gonna uh, double check it one more time. Even with the bowl on it, I'll just blow through it, make sure the it's opening and closing. Let's go take a quick peek at the blade. No, you know what? Let's go. I'm not sure which is gonna be easier or harder to do. I want to just take a quick look at the belt that drives it. If there's no issues with it, we're gonna leave it alone. But 
let's go flip it over. We'll go look at sharpening the blade and then we'll go see if we can take a peek at the belt, see if there's any tears or rips in it. Well, it definitely needs a little bit of love under here as far as uh, cleansliness. That generally is what rots the deck, the decks out. They get grass and then like over the course of the winter, water will stay behind them and then it rots the deck out from behind. It'll start lifting the paint and take it out. A little scraper will take care of that. I'd say once you, like right before you put it away, it's probably the best time to go do that. It won't hurt the plastic, but the, like I said, the metal, the metal areas, it'll start to make the, the paint kind of, you can see where it's resting. It'll make it flake away. This one's not too bad. A lot of them are really blown out. Generally on something like this, what I would do, it's not that important. I know I'm going to catch hell for this. They used to say, you know, balancing the blades and putting, um, uh, on a little teeter-totter and making sure you got an even weight on each side. If you look at the blade and the blade is pretty complete, it's not bent. Let me go pop you in the stand real quick. If a blade's not bent uh, or you know a, a section chunk taken out of it or you know it took a real hard hit, it as long as you sharp on both sides, you're taking so minimal off. There's really not going to be any weight difference on it. What I like to do is I'm going to go put my thumb right here just where I'm touching the blade. There's no plug or nothing in it. The brake is on it. It's going to drag a little. I'm going to go spin that blade around. And I'm going to see what the difference is between the two of them. This one has maybe an eighth inch difference between the two. So it's got a very slight bend. It could be on the spindle. It could be on the uh, blade itself. It, it, it's not that important. You're not going to notice an eighth of an inch difference in cutting of your grass. It's going so fast. There's really not even going to be a difference. We're going to go buzz this off because I want to go look at the, the belt that's underneath it anyway. Before I do that, I just want to show you what I would do. Jeremy, I take a grinder. This is a cutting wheel, but I, I would take a grinding disc and I would just work the back edge of it back and forth and just kind of sharpen both edges on the blade right on the deck. I wouldn't even bother taking it off. This actually doesn't look too bad. It's got, you know, one ding right there where it nailed something. The, you can't even see. The area that usually gets wiped out will be about that much. That's how much really does any work. This stuff really is never even seen very much. This is what, as you're pushing the mower, you know, this thing's spinning uh, 60 times a second at 3,600 RPM. So at 60 times a second, this blade is passing by the, the front of this as you're going. So the grass never, unless you're running about you know, 120 miles an hour, the grass is never even able to get into here before the next time comes around. It's always just gonna be that very little uh, edge on it right there that's doing all the work. So that's why a lot of times you look at the blade on the wear and you'll see that it's kind of like that much if it's cooked away. All right, let's get the blade off. Yeah, you can see that that blade isn't bad at all. It's actually very good. It's probably one of the best. You know, it's got a lot of corrosion and stuff on it, but it's still thick. There's no damage to it. A lot of times you'll see a crack will start forming right here on these little lift plates. These will actually kind of start burning down and wearing away. The, the surface of this will, will go away on you, and then you'll start getting a crack, and then this will wing a, a chunk of one ounce metal at you at 10,000 miles an hour. So I'm just going to go on the, the regular uh, belt grinder. We'll take care of that. But we're going to go dig a little bit more and get this cover off. We'll just take a quick look at that belt. This engine does not have a drain plug. I don't see one. Go grab that light. Yeah, there's nothing on this one. Ah, uh, sometimes this may be a cover that can come off of here, but we're not going to get into any of that. Uh, Might have been a boss somewhere on on the old casing. We used to be able to take it apart, but as you can see, there's no drain plug on there anyway. They just dip it to the side. We got the belt. I'm not seeing anything as far as any chomps in it. It looks decent. Decent enough to run for a mower deck anyway. Let's go clamp the lever on the handlebars and we'll see that we got some decent tension. And see what we got. 
That looks pretty good. It doesn't take too much. Plus on this one, there is that boss that was ripped out of the handlebars that was holding the cables. Remember we talked about for the uh, spark and for the break of it. Well, the, the other cable is going through that. So if we put that back in place, that'll give us even a little bit more tension. It doesn't take much to go drive the front of these. And actually the, like when you're babying it or you're, or you're trying to like slip it a little bit, you're actually slipping the belt around it. It's not like there's a clutch up inside there that's going on and off. The idea is just to slip the belt. So that's good enough for now. We're gonna go leave that alone. We're not gonna go chase that. And while we're under here, I'm just gonna take a few minutes, knock some of this loose crap off of here. And you don't need to watch that, do you? <laughs> I'll bring it back when I scrape some of the crap out of it. And that's just about two or three minutes later. Just to give you an idea, you can see now what I'm talking about, what it does. It holds the moisture against the paint, then the paint peels away. As the paint peels away, now it even holds more moisture behind it, and eventually just kind of, you know, rots the deck out. And it goes away. You can see it's all gone through here. I mean, if you're really anal about it, you could take it and paint it. Uh, it's going to be loaded up with grass fairly quickly all over again, especially if you cut wet grass. Uh, at the end of the year, if you're going to go do a maintenance on it, like run the fuel out of it, you can kind of dip the tank on its side and then just start it up until it runs out of gas. It's probably the best way to go. And then flip it on its side real quick and spray some like fluid film or something after you scrape the crap off. Just spray it with some like uh, fluid film, some kind of oil, and then you'll be all set. Right now, it, it's kind of, you can put it on, but it's not going to, it's not going to stay. It's going to come right off of there, right again, like I said. Right off. All right, let's go sharpen the, the blade. We'll put the cover back on and uh, flip her back on to the shiny side. There's really nothing even really wrong with this blade. Again, it's got a nick from hitting a rock or something, but. We'll go through the motion. You wouldn't believe how many mower decks, I get it like yard sales, people say they're not cutting very well, that the blade is upside down and it's put on like that. <laughs> It'll cut kinda, cause it actually kinda seems like it would be that way. You know, doesn't it, it, it almost kinda looks like, well, wouldn't you want the shoulder to kinda wrap around to support it? It really doesn't, there's a key that's in there. The sharp side down, looks pretty good. If you, have an, if you don't have an impact gun, generally you could take like a two by four or something and jam it between like one of the, the openings here. You could bring the blade around and jam like a two by four inside there and then just use like a socket wrench. Just be careful covering your hands so you don't slip off and punch the blade, you know, especially when you're tightening it because now you're going you know, into the lid. I really wouldn't do this this time of year, but just for demonstration purposes, and I'm not endorsing any kind of product, but this is fluid film is what I was talking about. Any kind of greasy material. They make two kinds. This is more like a clear, but you can see how it like clings onto it. Then they have a black, a black just to make it look prettier. The same thing with just a little bit of coloring in it so make you feel better about your rusted frame that's under your car <laughs> but i would do something like this i generally use like a bar and chain oil more and then in the uh in the fall and some people use their mowers year round but you know in our area it's like six months on and six months off i would do that and if you had a snowblower and you're kind of like swapping seasons i would do the same with them spray that on there that's going to wash right off of there as you're using it but you know, you get the idea. 
they're ready to flip it down, but one thing I, I kind of want to go over is wheels. Sometimes you're better off leaving them alone. If you have like a graphite kind of lube, which is uh, like a dry lube, and these are a little bit more, these are different as far as they're set up. A lot of times you got a cap with a nut that's in here. You can pop the cap off out of the way. This whole help cap may pop right off. I'm not sure. And you can kind of spray that right in there. As far as like spraying the stuff I just used, you can. Unfortunately, sometimes that makes it even worse, especially if like you have a gravelly or sandy area that you're doing with a mower deck and you're kicking a lot of dust and dirt up. What happens is as this thing is spinning around, it kind of clings to that oil and then that oil now has a gritty dirt stuck in it it actually does even worse it kind of grinds up the plastic against the steel in there and uh, chews them up more than normal uh more um like a riding lawnmower not as bad because the wheels the front wheels a little bit further away from the deck but still kind of the same thing let's give her a quick little dusting engine most of them are and what happens is you have a fan that's up here and it directs air draws air in th through the center and steers it across the top of the fins of the engine and cools the engine off as it's going a lot of them burn up because this area in well in our area this area gets clogged up with mouse nests and it packs it all up and there's no airflow going through here so if you look through your cover and there, you see a bunch of little twigs and sticks and the parts of patio furniture, cloth and everything in there. You want to pull it off before you run it. That's a real popular thing in our springtime here too. People get them running, you know, they'll fight them a little bit until this kind of chews through and makes a path. Get them fired up and they run them for about 45 minutes. It overheats and burns up the engine because of that. One other thing before we put the carb on while we're here. So this one has a height for the rear axle and the front axle. And there's only one adjustment on each side. On this one, a lot of times each wheel, especially on the older ones, is individual. Some of the newer ones, it's all done by one location. You'll be amazed how many times I find the front and the rear don't match or one wheel is off on the corner and then that'll definitely you know, make the mower deck pitch on an angle and you'll be cutting your grass. You do one direction, you flip around, you go back the other direction and your grass has an angle going up one direction and going back down on the other. And it's just because the wheels get knocked out of whack. These look pretty good. They're actually on the same level. <laughs> Trust me, I, I'd say 30 to 40 percent of the time. So you can get that card back on there. Another thing I see popular too is they'll have a broken bit of plastic. Either this boot right here or the, uh, that's backwards. That boot will be broken or the body of the carburetor will have a break in it. And from people not controlling their temper, <laughs> essentially. And they end up smacking through the, uh, kicking it, breaking the plastic. And then it has an intake leak after that. And we gotta get that back down in there. And they only have one place to go, so it's really simple. But yeah, they'll, they'll kick it. Or, or sometimes too, I found what they'll do is they'll, they'll take it and uh, they'll stack stuff on top of the mower deck in the off season in the garage and the weight of it pushes down and sometimes either cracks the gas tank or will crack the plastic back in there. I'm just gonna take the gas tank and take some compressed air and blow around there, just evaporate whatever is left inside of there and probably get the outside of it a bath. Looks like it can use it. The label is falling off. I'll throw that back on. We'll give her a little some of that. Figure out which way is up. It's all the engine engine info. Keep that with it. Second or two that'll dry. Pop that tank on. Not much to it. Yeah, a lot of times it'll split. You know, somebody will step on it or kick it or put something on top of it. Right where the seam is right here, that's where they'll split. So you'll fill them up and all of a sudden you'll see like gas kind of coming out. You think it's the cap, it's not. It's just where the, the kind of blow mold 
blow molded together. Get that out of there. It's got to go into the other cover. The higher low. The cover went like something like that, right? <laughs> there we go. So it's got to go high. Got to go up there. Get that gas line on there. We're in the 80s today, so the bikes are out like crazy. I don't blame them. Because you know what I'm going to do after I'm done with this mower? <laughs> At least go for a ride in the sandpit on the little Enduro. A little Yamaha 175. We'll go putt around on that. This fuel line's already set up for ethanol fuel. And the old, older ones are not. I'll leave that on there. It looks like it's in good shape. That air cleaner set up. Breather for the crankcase. And then on. We'll just buzz those screws back in that we did when we took it apart. I'm gonna pop the air cleaner back on. It's just got some dirt in it. A lot of times your best bet, you blow them out from the backside if you got an air gun. It'll push the dirt out. You get it either way. Knock the heavy stuff off that way. If you can, come from behind it. It just blows it out between the pleats. See what I mean? Show off. Um, if they're wet, I just put them out in the sun and let them dry up. Sometimes you get oil impregnated into them, and they're kind of screwed if that happens. You could try cleaning with brake clean or something. Uh, generally, they're fairly cheap. This one's fine. Uh, a way to tell on an air cleaner if it's good, this one's kind of small to go do it, but you would put a light behind it, and if you can see light kind of going through it, where's my other, uh, if you can see light passing through them, I don't know if that's showing up or not, but if the light's coming through it, you know it's fairly clean and it'll, it'll still filter air. If you can't see a light through it, then you know it's definitely clogged. We're good under the hood. Pop that cover back on there. Get there some, we're good to throw oil on it now. I don't think we need to flip it over. Kind of a firm believer in using stuff over that is still good. So a lot of people just will automatically throw an air cleaner in it, throw a plug in it. When you look at a plug, it will generally be that surface right there will end up getting round and burned away. That one's still flat, still straight across. The top of it is, is uh, perpendicular to it. The gap looks good. You put a feel gauge on it, but I, I say it's fine. That's where it fails. And the other place where it fails is usually a bunch of crud will build between the uh, porcelain insulator and the wall on the outside. And what it'll do is it'll arc going across I don't see anything really packed in there. I'm just going to clean that up real quick on a wire wheel and we'll throw that back in there. Oh. Let's fill her up. One thing I'd say, the, as far as oil, especially if it doesn't say what it is, you can try looking it up, but generally a 1030 or 1040 is what the small engine stuff, this four stroke small engine stuff works on. You don't have to do synthetic or anything like that. Generally, the motors, the mower is going to crap out, at least in our area, due to rust before anything else. The engines will stay. As long as you, like the stuff that we talked about, not having the mouse nest, letting it overheat, that kind of thing. They, uh, they fail. Nothing yet. If you do overfill it, just lean on that side a little bit and dump it out. Just want to make sure you got it all the way down that second, the second that, that click right there. And I think we're good. We're going to check it one more time. Also, what happens too? It kind of 
runs down the side of it there. Yeah, we're almost at the top dot. Call that for a win. Well, one thing we should probably address, we talked about that lever up top. This is the one that makes the wheels go. This is the one that makes the engine go. The dead man, you, you let go of that, it dies. But this bracket is flapping. And you can see how much slop is in these cables because this is popped out of whack. Let's see if we can go. That wasn't very hard, huh? Get that back into place. And now you can see cables taut. This one's almost taut, but you can also see that the spring up here is extending. That means that belt has full tension down below, that this, spring, that this spring is growing. So that's full tension on that belt down there. And the other one feels much better also. We're gonna go throw something around this that feels like it's kind of wimpy. I do see a couple old tie wraps here. Can we even steal them? That might even bend where they were supposed to be, you know? Actually, that one's probably meant to guide it. Keep the cables out of harm's way. I'm gonna throw one more on that to help support it. We'll make a match. Is that right? Wrong. <laughs> and if you were a dick, you would cut those. <laughs> so that we're gonna go point them down. But you would cut those so they would have a nice sharp edge. <laughs> we're just gonna leave them on there. They're not hurting anything. I think we're good as far as that's concerned. I think all we have to do now is uh, put some gas in it. I know a lot of them put these little garden hose things on here. You hook your garden hose up to it and you fire it up. The water splashes down there and it kind of does like a rinse cycle. The only problem with that is that you, when you're done, you're putting away a mower that's really wet. So whether that's a plus or a minus, I'm not quite sure. It's kind of a kind of gimmicky. Just my opinion. You want to have at some point when you get out is uh, there's an old real mower out back that someone gave me about two years ago. I still haven't addressed. We should probably dig that out pretty soon. Let me know what your thoughts are if you want to see that. One of the old old fashioned ones, you know, the, the blade goes around like that now. It's got a horizontal engine in the middle of it. I think it's an Aaron's. Let's go fire it up. See what it does. How many pulls do you guess? I'm going to say two. One to prime it and one to get it to go. Three? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> we do it in a second. How many pulls do you want to say? A hundred? Yeah, that, uh, you know. There's that. <laughs> Whoops. How many pulls? Choke is still on. It might clear up in a second. Or the linkage is out of whack. So we're gonna go quick take a look and make sure that linkage rod just isn't rubbing on anything I have in the car. We're going to pop the cover off one more time. Make sure it's not an issue with that. That's the only thing I see. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It may have like, if we just let it warm up a little bit too. It may have turned itself off. Or is it a possibility? It was rubbing on the top of that cover. It doesn't seem like it. This is what we actually are looking at, that lever right there. 
let's go fire it up one more time. We'll let it be just as it is. We'll just let it run for a minute or two. We'll see if the choke pulls off. If it doesn't, we got to come in here and do a little finagling where that's not as rough as it was. Yeah, possibly it was rubbing right here, maybe. But the choke is closed. Again, let's just see what it does. the air cleaner right back on one more time we'll make sure that it just functions like it should air cleaners on Seems pretty good RPM. rpm sound like they're okay the mower's not shaking around a lot so that seems like it's good Let it come up to temperature. I'm gonna go turn the fan on. I'll bring it right back. Yeah, it doesn't restart. I will say whatever grass that we're trying to cut was fairly high because that's at the top setting. That's got to be about four and a half, five inches of grass height. Generally, it depends on your property. I usually shoot for about the middle setting on the wheels. See how they move. <laughs> I might need two hands. Let's go set that one. Right about there, we'll do the middle on the front one too. Sometimes that stuff will get all bound up too, especially if it's never been moved. We want right there. Two up from the lowest and two up from the lowest on the third leg. This is oil and the gas that was in it. So on the gas, you see that darker area? That's all water. All that down below, that's all water. That's probably a good inch in the middle going across by the whole thing. So that's definitely what it was not running for. I think they probably put, they probably had that in there. It was left outside to be my guess by the dirt that was on it and then they poured fresh gas over the top of it, tried starting it, wouldn't go, and that was the outcome of it. OEM, OEM oil. So guys, that's gonna be about it on this. What I will probably do, anyway, what I normally do is, because even like how that choke acted up a little bit on that first start, it stayed on. What I'll do is I'll cut my grass with it and then about, you know, the following week I'll give it another cut, see how it cold starts, make sure everything is, is good, that it's going to repeat itself, that it doesn't have any other issues that are showing up. If it had a bagger on it, I, I yeah, I'd probably put it out for 120. If the fact that it doesn't, I'm probably going to put it out, I'm going to say for 90, see what we get on it. Sometimes they offer you 80 bucks, 90 bucks. Some people just give you it what you're asking they'll, they'll sell fairly quick it's usually out there for about two or three hours in front of the house with a sign on it and they're gone so without filming i'd say we probably would have taken about 35 minutes to do what we did if that so is your time worth that we got a dollar's worth of oil in it i don't think we did anything else other than maybe the spray lube underneath it that's it guys we're gonna go sign off and thank you all for hanging out with me and uh you know you have maintenance to do on one of your mowers uh hopefully some of the tips and tricks that i did on this one will be uh applicable. <laughs> I'm not going to try saying that again to this one, but for now, I think we're done. Thanks for hanging out. See you soon. I'm going for a bike ride. Cold start. I'm going to say first kick. Let's do it again. Ah. Dig it.